Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Mojang released the 14W6A snapshot today, and while it doesn't really have very much for survival, uh, there's a lot of new goodies for creative mode and map makers, basically a lot of new commands and new ways to use existing commands. So first of all, uh, I have some barrier blocks here, and I'm in creative mode, so if I actually select the barrier in my inventory, uh, now I can see these barriers, and if I deselect the barrier from my inventory, uh, these will eventually disappear. Uh, so it's kind of cool. Working with barriers is kind of hard if you can't see them. If you go into survival mode, um, holding the barrier doesn't work. Those will disappear. Uh, so it only works in creative mode, but very useful for working with barriers because it's really hard to work with something that you can't see. So uh, that's the first change for creative mode. Now, it, in previous versions of the game, skeletons and zombies and pig zombies could wear armor. Uh, with the previous snapshot 5A, uh, certain, well, basically all other mobs could wear armor too, and it was a little glitchy looking. Uh, giants look great though, and so while they fixed it for a bunch of other mobs, giants are able to wear armor, and I think maybe some other mob types are also able to wear armor. It looks, looks really cool though to have the giant wearing that giant armor, holding a giant sword. Um, okay, so there's some, some new tags on items. There's uh, pickup delay, which is basically how long before you can pick up the item, and well, age. So these aren't actually new, but what is new is if you set them to these very particular values, 32,767 for pickup delay and negative 32,768 for age, uh, the item has a couple of properties. One is that it can't be picked up. So you see I walk around on it, won't, can't pick it up. And then the other is that it's never going to despawn. No matter how long we wait around, uh, the item is going to sit here. So that's pretty cool for map makers to be able to, to spawn in items that, that are going to stick around forever or uh, or can't be picked up. Uh, it's kind of a cool way to maybe label something or, or whatever. A lot of capabilities there, I guess. Um, but it's mostly aesthetic, I, I also suppose. Being able to keep something around forever, though, is, is very nice. Uh, so there's also a new tag for items, can place on. And this is a list of items which you can place that item or a list of blocks that you can place the item on so uh, for instance this is going to give me a stone button uh, that I can only place on a diamond block or a gold block if I press it uh, this only works in adventure mode so if I'm in creative mode I can uh, oops, I already have these there I can I can place these wherever but if I go to adventure mode uh, you'll notice there's no outline on on the iron or the door or on the stone on the ground but the gold block has an outline and the the diamond block has an outline, so I can place it on the gold block here, open the door if I want, or whatever. Um, this command block has a very similar command. It's going to give me a stone button that I can only place on diamond or gold blocks, but it also uses the new hide flags tag, which I'm not going to go into too much detail about, but it's a bit field which lets you hide certain components of the item's information in the uh, tooltips. So I'm going to give myself a button, and if I hover over it, it looks like a normal button. Let me go back to and get grab a button from this one. Um, it just happened to my button. Oh, I must have dropped it by accident. <laughs> uh, if I, but the button from this one, which is the one I have selected right now, it says that it can be placed on a block of diamond or a block of gold. Uh, this one that I got from the hide, what was it? What's the tag called? I can't remember. Hide flags. Um, it doesn't show what it can be placed on. So if, as a map maker, you want to hide that information, you can do that. And I can imagine if you have a list of like a hundred things that can be placed on, you'd probably want to hide it. Um, but it does behave the same way. I, I can't place this in adventure mode on, you know, uh, iron or stone or whatever. It does work on diamond blocks. So, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's a lot of control for map makers about what things can be placed on adventure mode. Of course, now the default is that players can't place blocks in adventure mode, so this sandstone I can't place anywhere. Um, so this is a way to allow players to place blocks in adventure mode, but only if they're given it with a special can place on tag. Okay, so next, um, in in previous versions of the game, uh, the tell raw command is, is pretty cool because it allows you to have text that you can click on uh, that'll run commands. So for instance, the command I'm about to run will have a little thing that says you can click here in order to keep yourself speed. And so it runs this command, effect at P155. So if I click on it, and then I get this thing that pops up in my chat. If I click here, I'll get that speed effect. And you see I have speed. Um, 
and I can click it as many times as I want. Uh, but this only works if, if I'm an op or an operator or OP or whatever you want to call it. And um, because it's actually having me run the command. Uh, and if you're not an operator, you can't run the effect command. So what they've done is they've added new capabilities to allow non-operators to click on things like this and have some redstone get triggered. So I'm going to create the trigger objective and it's uh, so this is a creating a new objective called player trigger. Uh, the type of the objective is, is a new type. It's called trigger. And so now if I click this, I'll get a, a command which triggers that objective. But if I click here, uh, it, so yeah, it, it uh, basically changed my player trigger score to one. And then there's some stuff over here which was running the effect command on any player with a, um, a, a player trigger score of at least one. And then it reset my player trigger score back down to zero. It's a little complicated, I guess, if you're not used to looking at these commands. But um, if, I, if I go ahead and try and click on that command again, it's going to tell me trigger player trigger is not enabled. So you can only click on it once, and then it has to get re-enabled. So if I click on the button, it'll, it'll re-enable the player for um, the speed up. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> it's a little bit buggy right now, I, I think. Um, I think when I created the objective, it was supposed to not allow me to run the command until I um, actually set the, the player's score to zero, basically put the player on the scoreboard. Uh, okay, this probably isn't making a lot of sense, but some of you will <laughs> understand what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, so right now I can't click on this. It says trigger, player trigger is not enabled. Um, so if I, if I enable the player trigger using this command um, again, then I can click on here again, and you can see my player trigger got set to one, and I get the effect again. Uh, I can re-enable it and be able to click on it again, player trigger set to one, and I get the speed effect again. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but it's, it's a kind of very roundabout way, but very usable way for map makers to allow non-ops to actually interact with redstone um, using these commands, or the, the tell raw command and, and, uh, and clickable commands in that. So I think that's really useful. But it is, I think, a little bit buggy right now, and it's also pretty complicated to understand. But um, yeah, we'll be seeing more of that as time goes on, I'm sure. I'm, I don't think they're done working with this feature. Uh, so you can also clear a, a single objective for a player. So previously, you could use score players reset at P, and it would reset all of their scores. Um, now this, this button will reset just their player trigger score. Uh, which also, I think, allows me to click on the button again and get the effect. I think this is a bug, though. I think resetting the player trigger score is actually supposed to disable the player from being able to use the trigger command. Um, but you can read more about that in the link to the change list that I've uh, put in the video description. Okay, so uh, this command adds a couple of players to the player trigger scoreboard. So you can see on the scoreboard I have query up and astigical. Uh, those are dummy players. Those aren't actual players. So I put them there in order to demonstrate the new capability uh, of using a star. So anytime that you would want to list a player or a players like reset at A, if I run this with at A and I push it, it's going to it's gonna reset my score because I'm a player, but query up and astigical are not players. So um, using star basically says anything, any name that's listed on the scoreboard will get uh, will get used in this command. So I can reset all of the scores, including um, things that aren't names or players that are logged off. And that's actually probably the best use of this uh, this star selector. So yeah, that's just kind of useful if you want to reset a scoreboard and there are players that are offline, uh, you couldn't really reset their scores previously. Okay, so there's a new uh, a new argument in the effect command. If I go ahead and run this command, it's going to give me strength two, and we can see I have strength two for seven seconds, and it has those annoying annoying particles that get up in your face, and I personally really hate those particles. Uh, 
And as a map maker, now we have a new option to hide the particles. So if you add true at the end of the command, I will still get the strength effect, strength two, but I'm getting no particles here. You can see there aren't any particles. I think this is really cool. I, I know a lot of people that will turn off particles uh, in their options just because it's so annoying to see the, the potion particles all the time. So this will help with that a lot. Uh, okay, so then there's a, a few new changes to um, scoreboard objectives. Scoreboard objectives add mind stones, so that's the name of the objective. This is the type of the objective. It now allows you, if you want to, uh, check out how many stone the player has mined. Instead of using uh, stat.mindblock.1, which is a numerical ID, now you can use the, the name of the object, which is minecraft.stone. So this works for all kinds of different stats. Just a simpler way to do it, rather than having to look up the numerical ID. And I think they're going to be getting rid of the numerical ID stuff in the future. Um, then there's a couple of new objectives, which are uh, things you couldn't quite do before. There's a, uh, a team kill dot red or team kill dot yellow or whatever objective that says how many players you've killed on a team whose color is red. And then similarly, there's killed by. So killed by dot blue, killed by dot red, whatever. It says how many players you've been killed by that have a team that, whose color is blue. So it's using the color of the team, not the name of the team or anything. But uh, if you have two teams or something, it's a lot easier to count how many you've killed from one team or the other. Uh, and there was no way to really do that before. So that's kind of, that's pretty cool. And then the last thing I want to get to is uh, there's a new achievement in the snapshot. This is one of the few changes for survival. Uh, if you craft a golden apple, uh, you, sorry, this is, I've done it wrong actually. I need to give myself, uh, if you cra craft an OP golden apple or a notch apple or whatever you want to call it, um, it, there's a new achievement for that. And there we go. It's overpowered. Let's build a notch apple. So there we go. That's the that's the 14w6a snapshot. Like I said, mostly just new commands, new options for existing commands. Uh, the trigger thing, yeah, I think that's a little bit buggy, but uh, I'm sure that'll be worked out in the future. Maybe I'm just confused about what it's supposed to do, though. So, um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching.